Hey guys, let's say we have this graph x squared plus b, where b is a constant, so we can move it up or down. And let's say we put it back at the origin. So this is the friendly neighborhood parabola, y equals x squared. Now for this curve, what we can do is draw the equation of the tangent line at various points. So if I want the slope of the tangent line there, or the equation of the tangent line there, I can sort of make this orange line dance all the way around the curve. I'm going to label some points as well. So if I move this to the right, it's going to tell me that the slope at this point of this curve or of the tangent line is 0 0.8. And now what happens if we plot all these green dots together? So those are input value plus the slope as the y coordinate. Hopefully you see that the green dot is tracing a linear function or a straight line. So let's say we put it back at zero and I make the graph of the derivative appear. And let's say we go back and forth again. You'll notice that the green dots always stay on the graph of 2x, which indeed is the derivative of x squared plus zero or just x squared itself. So the idea here is that at this point, the slope of the tangent line is zero. And at the x coordinate zero, the y value of the derivative graph is zero as well. Now, if I move this a value to the right, let's see, right here, the slope of the curve at this point is two, which is the y value of the derivative graph. So at this stage, I'm going to hide a couple of things just to make it a little bit easier to spot stuff. In fact, I don't need this label either. Now, what I want you to observe is what happens to the graph of the derivative as I move the function up and down. So if I move the function up, the graph of the derivative does not change. Similarly, if I move the function down, the graph of the derivative does not change. The reason for that, hopefully you've thought about this, is if I move the function up, the slope of the tangent line to this point at this curve, or to, to this curve at this point does not change. It doesn't matter whether the graph is shifted up or shifted down. The curve of the slope at that point is still the same, uh, it's still the same steepness, I guess. And if I move this point somewhere else, notice what happens to the steepness of the curve if I move it up or down, it doesn't change. So the idea is, if we were to find the derivative of x squared at this point, let's put the labels back on, at this point, the slope would be negative 2.4. Now, if I move the function up, it's still negative 2.4. If I move it down, it's still negative 2.4, no matter where the function is. So what happens if we were to find the derivative of x squared plus 2? We're still going to end up with 2x as our derivative. All this is to say the following. If we were to find the derivative of x squared, we get 2x. If we find the derivative of x squared plus 1, we get 2x. If we find the derivative of x squared plus 2, we get 2x. If we find the derivative of x squared plus 3, uh, 3, we get 2x. There's a point to this. Uh, if we go on the negative side, x squared minus 1, we still get 2x as well. So. Now we approach this problem. So this is everything we've done from the first semester. Now we approach it from the other side. What happens if all we have is the equation or the graph of the derivative? Just from this, just from 2x, do we know if this graph came from x squared or if it came from x squared plus 1 or if it came from x squared plus 2 or x squared plus 3? or even any of the minus constants. So x squared minus one, x squared minus square root of 17, x squared minus 35. We have no idea. We, we lose that unless we have something called an initial value, which we don't in this example. If all we have is the antiderivative, we can never go back to what the exact function would have been. It could have been x squared minus one. It could have been x squared by itself. It could have been x squared plus 10. I mean, that's out of the frame, but you get the idea. That all these functions, if they're moved up or down by a constant, the slope of the curve does not change based on whether it's moved up or down. The steepness of this curve at this point stays the same whether I move this curve up or if I move it down. 
That's why when we find an antiderivative, we're actually finding a family of functions. We're not finding just one function that is the that is the antiderivative. We're finding an antiderivative. An antiderivative of x of 2x would be x squared plus 1. Another one would be x squared plus 2. Another one would be x squared plus 3. Now instead of writing out an infinite number of constants, positive and negative, what we do is we say an or the family of antiderivatives will be x squared plus capital C. The capital C accounts for all the constants that may or may not have been in the original function. So if your capital C is zero, that's okay. Then your function just passed through the origin to begin with and life is good, we move on. If your constant was one, then that means that your function passed through zero comma one. If your constant was plus three, then you move the graph up three, but you'll notice that the slope does not change the entire time. So the idea of this plus C hopefully makes more sense geometrically speaking, that if I move this function up or down, the slope of the curve is not changing at different points. We're just changing the location of the function. Now, since we don't know from just the, uh, just from the derivative, what the original function would have been, we say, well, it was x squared plus a constant. A constant could be up, uh, could be a positive number, could be a negative number if it's moved down. Hopefully that helps clarify why there's a plus C uh, at the end of antiderivatives when we find them.